Hello and welcome to a new video breakdown. This time I want to show you a quick breakdown on how I created this particular model. Along the way I will be showing you how I went about creating the low and high poly as well as the UVs and final model texture. Ok, let's get right to it. For this model, what I did was first create a base mesh using Maya. This base mesh is later utilized to create the high poly model from which later on I also get the low poly model out of. To make the modeling process a lot easier, what I decided to do was to first create a simple block out of the shapes. This block out is used to get a general idea of the size and silhouette of the model, and it also serves as a guide once we start adding more details to the model. For the stones or small rocks, what I did was use a cube, applied one division to it, and moved a few vertices to make it look less round. I proceeded to use the basic rock shape and placed it around the original blockout using the blockout dome as a guide for the placement. I made sure to add some variety in terms of the size of the rocks to create the effect of this being a structure made of many different stacked stones. I placed the stones one by one for one side of the overall building. Once I was done placing the rocks on one side, I duplicated the models, merged them, and placed them on the other side of the structure by changing the scale to negative 1. You can alternatively use the mirror option to do this. I duplicated the model to the other side in order to save time during this phase of the process. After duplicating the model to the other side, I made sure to manually add more rocks at the center point of the structure. I did this because I did not want the model to look symmetrical, especially at the center location of the model. For the arch or entrance section of this structure, I decided to add a little bit more geometry to make it easier to sculpt and add details once the model was moved to ZBrush. This is what the low poly base ended up looking like. One thing I did before exporting to ZBrush was to rename all the pieces. I did this because I did not want to have to rename the pieces after sculpting in ZBrush. In ZBrush, I imported the model using the C plugin menu as I wanted to import the model as an FBX file. Importing as an FBX file makes it possible to work with the model in separate pieces as it was when it was exported from Maya. For sculpting of the main structure and rocks, I assigned auto polygroups to the model so each rock would be its own polygroup. After that, I enabled Dynamesh for the model while keeping groups on in order to keep the meshes separate from each other and not welded together. The Dynamesh resolution was also kept relatively low. For the actual sculpting of the rocks, I used the Trim Dynamic Brush to add planar details and variation to the surface and silhouettes of the rocks. I proceeded to do that with every single rock of the building. This process was not very time consuming as it only took about 15 minutes to be done with all the rocks. In this case I did not enable symmetry while working on the rocks as I wanted each one to have a somewhat unique shape. If I had used symmetry I would probably have saved at least 6-7 to seven minutes of rock sculpting time so this is something to keep in mind. For the arch I made a few changes to it by moving some of the rocks in order to make it look like the stones are actually on top of each other. I also used the clay brush to add some edge chips and damage. I also used the orb rock brush in order to add details to the surface of the model and in order to avoid having too many flat planar shapes. Once I was done sculpting the main building, I enabled Dynamesh once more, but this time around I enabled it with groups set to off. I did this because I wanted the model to become one continuous watertight model and no longer have it separated into pieces. At this stage I also used the clay polish to make the model and details look a bit tighter and slightly more smooth. For the wooden planks I used almost the same process as the main building. I enabled Dynamesh, used Trim Dynamic to add damage and bevel to the edges. I also used the Orb Cracks 2 brush in order to add wood fiber details to the surface. The same process was also used on the spikes. One last thing I decided to do for this model was to create eyes sculpted from rock. For this, what I did was append a cube, remove the center portion of the cube, used the close hole tool and later enabled Dynamesh and sculpted the necessary details while also having symmetry enabled. The final step in ZBrush was to obviously export the high poly models. 
keep in mind that I wanted to make the model using mesh names in Substance Painter, so I made sure the high poly models used the suffix underscore high. At this point I also needed to create low poly models and for this I used the decimation tools. I decimated each model to a low poly count while still retaining the overall shape. When using decimation you will always end up with a triangulated model and sometimes geometry that is not totally ideal. In most cases there is geometry cleanup that needs to be done after using decimation. I personally find that decimation works well for many things including rocks, but if you need a low poly model that is made of quads, I recommend looking into the C Remesher tool. The last step for the low poly model is to import the decimated mesh back into Maya, clean up any geometry that is not necessary, rename the models to have the suffix underscore low and the very important step of creating UVs. For UV cuts, I typically recommend assigning your cuts at spots where the geometry reaches a near 90 degree angle. For this model, since the rocks have an organic shape, what I did was set my UV cuts at spots which would not be visible during rendering. In this case, the cuts were made at the bottom of the model and inside lip of the arch entrance. For the other geometry pieces, I followed the near 90 degree change rule. I packed my UVs making sure to use as much space in the UV quadrant as possible. Finally, I duplicated some parts of the model, like the spikes, and placed them in different spots. Because these pieces are duplicates, they share the same UVs. I merged those duplicates and also offset the UVs by one in the UV quadrant. I set the normals for the model and exported the model for texturing. In Substance Painter, I create the file using the default template. For the bake settings, I load up the high poly model, set it to bake by mesh name, and increase the anti-aliasing amounts. I also prefer to bake the normal map and wall space normal as a start. This allows me to see any baking artifacts before having to wait for all the other maps to bake. In this case, the original bake looked fine, so I proceeded to bake the remaining maps. Be aware that you have to enable bake by mesh name for each map, as well as curvature, ambient occlusion, and thickness. There are occasions, such as this one, where I decided to bake the ambient occlusion with the default settings, meaning ambient occlusion is not baked with the by mesh name setting enabled. In this case, having done that makes it so that there is a bit of a hard edge where some of the pieces meet. Depending on the look you're going for, you may want to leave it this way or set the self occlusion to bake by mesh name. The texture process for this model ended up being really straightforward. In this case, I used the 3DX Stylized Smart Material 2.0. If you're interested in getting it, there is a link in the video description. As I used this material, what I did was change the main color as well as minor changes to the roughness amount for each piece of the model. One copy for the rocks, wood planks and spikes. As an added layer, I also used a curvature map on a color layer, used a levels on it and set the layer to overlay, with the opacity set at a low amount. So this was the process on how to create this model. Before I end this video, I want to invite you to take a look at my newest course, a complete course on how to model a vehicle.